Hi, in this video, we're going to start module three. Uh, module three is a, a module on loans and bonds. And what I'm going to try to convince you of uh, throughout this is that they're really the same thing. So when I think of a loan, I think of myself as being the borrower. And when I think of a bond, uh, I think of myself as uh, same as a loan. It's just I'm the lender now. So um, just what perspective are you going to take? So from loans, I'm thinking of the perspective as being the borrower and bonds. I think of the perspective as being the lender. We'll get into bonds in the later part of the, of the module. We're going to start with loans because you're probably more familiar with loans. But again, my, my goal is to uh, try to convince you that they're really the same thing. Mathematically, they're exactly the same thing. Okay, so let's get into some uh, loan notation and terminology. Uh, again, start with loans because I think that's what you're more familiar with. The, I'm going to use a capital L to represent the loan amount. Uh, when I say, uh, uh, I, you'll, you'll probably hear me start saying things like cap L instead of capital L. I just abbreviate the word capital with cap, so cap L is, is capital L. Uh, that's going to represent a loan amount. Uh, I didn't say cap I. I is going to be the periodic effective interest rate. So these loans are going to have uh, periodic payments, maybe monthly payments. And if so, then I would be the monthly effective interest rate. If payments were annual, I would be the annual effective interest rate and so forth. And generally speaking, capital letters are going to represent amounts and lowercase letters are going to represent like interest rates or time periods and, and things like that. And so uh, speaking of time periods, N is going to represent the number of periodic payments uh, of our loan. And then uh, I'm going to use a cap C to represent the amount of each of those payments. Now, I'm going to start off not assuming that those payments are level. So the payments might be different at different times. So the first payment might be a different amount than the second payment and so forth. So I have to add a decoration. I'll put a subscript of a K. So cap C sub K is going to be the amount of the Kth payment. Now, what we're going to often be interested in is uh, kind of analyzing that payment more closely because part of that payment, so when you're, when you're paying off a loan, part of the, your payment pays off interest on the loan, and the amount of the payment that pays off the interest we're going to denote by capital I. Uh, it's an amount, so it's a capital letter. Cap I sub K, then, is the amount of interest that's going to be paid during the Kth period. Sometimes you hear a Kth period or Kth installment our uh, case payment, those all mean the same thing. Okay, so part of your payment, part of that amount, cap C sub K, pays interest. The amount that's paying interest is cap I sub K, and then the rest of it's going to pay off principal that, that you borrowed, the amount that you borrowed. And so uh, the amount that we borrowed we call principal, so cap P sub K is going to be the notation that we're going to use for the amount of principal that's going to be repaid in the case payment. And so we can take the total payment amount and split it up as the amount of interest that's being paid and then separately the amount of principal that's being repaid. Um, so interest being paid and then principal being repaid. Okay, there's one other letter that we're going to use, uh, one other notation. A lot of problems, uh, many problems. This might be the final thing that we're looking for, or this will be an intermediate step. But we'll be interested in knowing what the balance is on the loan at a certain point in time. So cap B sub K is going to be the balance immediately after the Kth payment. Um, uh, other words that you might hear instead of balance, you might hear the, the you'll, you'll hear this term outstanding balance. It's not outstanding that you have a balance. That's not what they mean by that. But it's uh, the balance that you still owe. So it's still out there. So that's your outstanding balance. Uh, so uh, our outstanding principle is also a word that you'll hear. Uh, those all mean the same thing. But I'm just going to say the word balance, and I'm going to uh, represent that the balance immediately after the Kth payment with a the letter cap B with a subscript of K. Okay, we can capture a lot of this information in, on, uh, in a timeline. So this is what my, my standard timeline would look like, cap L. I'm going to take out some loan amount. And then one period later, I'm going to have a payment, uh, cap C sub 1. First payment's cap C sub 1. Second payment, cap C sub 2, and so forth. All the way up until I'll make this last payment, cap C sub N. Remember, N is the number of payments. So cap C sub N is going to be the amount of the nth payment. That's my last payment. So bringing the uh, valuation date back to some previous point in time, at time K, I have a payment, say, at time K, and then just after that payment, that's the key word, after that payment, just after it, uh, is my balance uh, that I'm representing with a cap B sub K. 
So if you look at the balance, there's a couple of balances that we, we kind of know information about. For instance, after the last payment, well, you don't owe any more after the last payment. The last payment pays off your loan. So the uh, cap B sub N, N being the number of payments, cap B sub N is going to be zero. You don't owe anything after the last payment. And then before you've made any payments at all, at time zero, at, right after you've taken out the loan amount, but before you've made any payments, uh, you, you, you owe the cap L. So uh, cap L we can think of as the balance at time zero, um, yeah, so cap B sub zero. Okay, so let's go back to my slide, cap B sub K being the balance just after the K payment. Uh, sometimes we'll be interested in knowing what is the balance before the, the payment. But this is it's very easy. Just, let's kind of just logically think through this. You know, if you owe, let's say that you owe the bank $1,000 and you're walking in there uh, with a $100 bill to pay off, you know, to make a payment. So you owe $1,000 and you hand that $100 bill to the uh, to the clerk and they record it. Well, how much do you owe now? Well, it's $900. So the, the relationship is, is uh, well, I kind of got ahead of myself first. Let me mention that the balance before the payment, of course, is not going to be the same as the balance after the payment. And so the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add the super, superscript of BEF for the balance before. But then uh, my, my, my example now illustrates the, the relationship between the balance before the payment, the amount of the payment, at time K and the balance just after the payment. So if you take the amount of the balance before the payment, the cap B sub K with the BEF, the before uh, bal uh, payment balance, that would be like the 1,000 in my example. Subtract off $100 and you get 900. That's your balance after the payment. I'm going to add the uh, payment to both sides of this equation just so I can write this as uh, the balance before a payment would be the balance after the payment, and then you have to add the payment back in. Very, just think through it. It's just very logical if you if you'll think through it. Okay, so uh, another way that I want to talk about the balance before the kth payment is to back up the valuation date or back up to back up one period and look at just after the k minus first payment at time k minus one you made a payment so there's a balance just after that payment at time k minus one so what's the relationship between the balance at time k minus one and the balance at time k well the balance at time k minus one you just made that payment they're not going to let you, you know, they're not going to say, oh, well, you don't owe, owe any interest between the time period K minus 1 to time K. You're going to be charged interest. And so the balance at time K minus 1, just after I made the payment at time K minus 1, when I accumulate that for one period, then I'll get the balance before I made any payment at time K. So the balance before the Kth payment, just immediately before the Kth payment, would be the balance just after the k minus first payment accumulated and of course accumulated is multiplying by one plus i so that's another way that we could get um, before payment balances uh, so these are the two ways to get to get before payment balances and and depending on the you know the information that's given to you one might be a better way to uh, to one formula might be better to use than the other okay so in the next video we'll get into some uh, some other facts about loans I'll see you then